The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and tell, make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. We have studied that because we are children of God. Success is basic for all of us. Now, what we are working on is to have good success. That is why we are calling for the repositioning of the mind. So that we move away from the slavery mentality to know that we are children of God. And that blessings crown the head of the righteous. All we need is to grow. We grow in that relationship. Okay. And we'll be entering into that good success. We, we also have to reposition our hearts. Okay. So we can follow hard after God Himself, not His hands. We have to try to know God because God is knowable. Through our personal experience with him we will keep falling in love with him over and over again as the days go by like jesus our master gave us an example how he worked intimately with god trying to let us know that god can be no. We said that there's a mysterious communication of divine knowledge to those who walk in quiet contemplative fellowship with God. We emphasize this in the life of Simeon and Anna. Then we spoke about the fact that Moses was so close to God that he knew the ways of God. But the Israelites who were standing in front of their tents and would not enter the tent of meeting, for them, they could only recognize the back end. Brothers, come and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. My prayer for you is still the prayer I prayed last week. May the Lord direct your heart into God's love. And Christ's perseverance. Amen. Amen. But tonight I want us to begin discussing what should we discuss? What? Repositioning your hands. So, repositioning your hands. Yeah. So that we can have good success. I'm talking about balance success. So we'll be looking at repositioning your hands. Now hands here is in reference to ability and skill. Okay. See, it is common to have parishness come out on 31st December night to praise God. Praising God for the fact that they are alive on 31st December. We all get elated when the clock Goes past the midnight hour. We shout for joy. As if to say, we have escaped the foulest snare. 
of resum for na video yeah the snail is broken video na bubu and we have escaped i end here age e ho living just to escape is no is no life it's beautiful to praise God. That is a righteous requirement for all of us believers. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. So to show gratitude for the grace and mercies of God. It's a righteous requirement for all of us. But the near fact that you didn't die in 2022 and that you are alive in 2023 does not mean much. In fact, what that means is that your death is still ahead. a woman say, when <laughs> this is better than what I said. <laughs> you see, there is going to be a 31st night that I will not be part of it. There is going to be a new year that you cannot celebrate because you would have been there. Until then, what do we do? Because the dead does not praise the Lord. Neither those who go into silence. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 please. Ecclesiastes 9 10. Ecclesiastes 9 10. Shall we just take one beautiful song? What song were you singing? Oh Lord, all my springs are in thee. Oh Lord, nothing can satisfy my weary soul. All my springs are in thee. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 is a very popular scripture. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, on the line, you are going. He didn't say, I am going, he said, you. <laughs> so the one who wrote this scripture, <laughs> He separated himself from it. He said, where you? You are going. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Now, Reposition your hands. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. If you say, as someone do a worry chrono, a juma, ne a jene, any nimde, any nyansa, any ho. So working, planning. Knowledge and wisdom pertains to the earth. When we get to where he is, we will become like him. And we wouldn't have planning. We wouldn't call something knowledge. We wouldn't call something wisdom. We don't need it there. We will become like him. We will be embodied with all every good thing. So if the Lord has spared your life. And you are alive today. What does that mean to you? 
What does living mean to you? What does living mean to you? Because I've just said that not dying does, doesn't mean much. Because certainly there's going to be a day that you will die. Philippians 1 verse 20. Yeah, okay. Philippo 4 Romano 80. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Ne mum se e ye da no se en nam en kwemwo wwomu wod wadin nam ye ny na be kam fu Christo minipedium for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. A medi e masi amiti any Christo na uwo e ye menfaswo. If I'm going on if I go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. Na se wona mi asetena yi ara na minya adwuma mu aba ene minnim de menfa. So this is Paul family in the clothes of the Romans. In the way as man for Paul a o si ni a Roman for agidie no mu eden. Now he he has been arrested by the Romans. Roman for acheno. Now he 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 knows that there was he didn't have chances of living. But from prison, he rise to encourage the church in Philippi. Then he told them that he stops between life and death. He doesn't know what to choose because it looks like this is not even in his hands. Then he says that maybe and you will be spared or you may be killed. But no matter what happens to him, for him to live is Christ and to die is gain. For him, there is no difference between dying and living. Because when we live, we live for him. When we die, we die for him. So whether we live or die, we belong to him. So so far as God is concerned, death and life uh, is no different so far the believer is concerned. Now, so Paul understood life and he understood death. But he said, if he has to be spared and he comes back to them. That will mean fruitful labor. Verse 22. If I'm um, to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. That's Yet it. what should I what shall I choose? I do not know. But so he is just trying to say that if perchance by the grace of God I am spared to come back to you, that will mean fruitful labor. So when they spare his life and they give him that space to live, he will want to make it count. He says, fruitful labor. So for Paul, living meant fruitful labor. And he was for Paul, not family. Living should mean to all of us fruitful labor, not just but when you are alive, it must be fruitful labor. Labor is work, 
effort directed to produce or accomplish. Labor is a is productive activity. So for him, the apostle Paul, living is not just working hard, but working in such a way that brings productivity, fruitful labor. It is more for Paul from the so what he has here, and yes, we are Juma Keke, Nemo, and so we are Juma, and the day, and I say, a bus will be a bit free more. Life is competitive. Whether you appreciate it or not, life is competitive. See, eight billion of us struggling for a little space of employment and fame. Now, for you to stay relevant and competitive, you need to reposition your hands. Yes. And be diligent in ventures you are involved in. See, Paul admonished the brethren in Thessalonica to desist from idling and that those who would not work should not eat. That's my for Paul. Living means fruitful labor. So reposition your hands. You need to train your hands to work. Develop your abilities and be skilled. Develop your abilities and be skilled. You see, diligence and laziness are both attached to hands. Proverbs 10, verse 4. Proverbs 10, verse 4. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands brings worth. And then we are saying that diligence and laziness are both attached to hands. Lazy hands make for poverty. And I but diligent hands brings worth. Now in CF or the Ahunya and Eba. Your hand may choose either. Unsa a bit me up Either to follow diligence or to follow laziness. Say obey in CF or an obey only half for. It is in your hands. Proverbs 22 29. We'll pick it from the King James Version. Um, Proverbs 20 to 29, if you have. Shall we read together? See thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Se wuhunu onipa oye e juma hu en siya. A himfwe nim ana obejina. Have you seen a man who is diligent in his works? He will stand before king. Not before mere men. So let us stop blaming our, our, our woes on people. Sometimes ask your hands what your hands is doing. Reposition your hand. Let's take this same reading from the NIV, please. Where have you? NIV. Do you see someone skilled? So this one is giving the end product. Now, if you put in diligent, you'll be skilled. Now, in your work, then you will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low ranks. Now you may start like a laborer. 
But let's develop your skills. Now develop your abilities. You, you stand before kings. Not before me and men. Not before me and men. Now when you go to Proverbs 31. From verse 10 to 20. Now I want all of us to take time and then read. It talks about the virtuous woman. Now very hard working woman. But pay attention to what I'm going to say now please. Diligence. It's constant and earnest effort to accomplish what is undertaken. Constant and earnest effort. The efforts require energy. Now diligence is careful hard work. Who work so a diligent person who works so purposefully to achieve a targeted end. There are some people who work very hard, but they are not diligent because they are not they are not working carefully. They are just working hard and sweating. Diligence is careful hard work. You see, diligent people, they are mindful of details. They are mindful of details. Very, very diligent. They are mindful of details. That is why I'm saying they work carefully. They work Hard. See, without diligence, no one achieves anything. Now, without diligence, you don't achieve much. Are we together? Are you here? Yes. So, Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 9 to 11. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? Obeda, I could see that bang, or quite you for a brief bang, and I will be sorry every one A little sleep, comma. I want to read together, eh? We read the comments and everything together. Ready, go. A little sleep, comma. A little slumber, comma, a little folding of hands to rest, dash. Na ye can kaya or say en na kakra wa san ho en koto kakra wa san ho na en sa mimpuno ah madan so kakra dash ye na na uh na chase or the bibia san wa na se or the or the co baby, or the co baby, the nature baby, the nature baby. Dash means the nature baby. The nature baby. The nature and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. And now we hear a bit too say, or we must come for. Now we want to say, let us say, actually we come for. Little sleep, come on. And not a crack. A little slumber, come on. A little folding of the hands to rest, and it will lead you straight to the home of poverty. It will come upon you like a thief. And scarcity as an armed man, like an armed robber. as an armed man, like an armed robber. You see, without diligence. The most gifted person cannot make it. See, gift alone is not is not is not enough. Because God has gifted all of us. 
Why are the poor? Why are some not making it? Some even have opportunities, but they will not exert themselves. A captain of a football team described a fellow footballer as the, the most wasted talent. He has ever come across. Now, he is the captain. But he knows that this guy is much more talented than him. But he is not exacting him. At the end of the day, he said, This guy is the most wasted talent I've ever known. I don't want to mention their name. Because it is not a pleasant thing to say. But you need to hear. First Timothy 4 14. Do not neglect your gifts, your talent, your abilities which was given to you through prophecy or was given to you by birth, by the grace of God. When the body of elders laid their hands on you or when you were given birth to Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Be diligent in this matter. Work hard on your abilities and graces and giftings. You have to be diligent in matters you are involved in. There must be that constant, consistent effort to accomplish what is undertaken. So, we must be diligent in prayer. We need to be diligent in our study of the word. We need to be diligent in our academics. academics yeah. We need to be diligent in our work life. We, see, we need to be diligent in our marital life. You see, you just cannot... When you, you have, you have to hold it. So when you marry a wife or when you, when you marry a spouse, as you say, you need to work at the marriage. Diligent at it. Work at it. And when you work at it diligently, you will have good marriage, good success. Diligence in our parenting. Mm. Now we need to be diligent in our finances. There are some who say that I don't have money. I have not. I don't have bank account. So why? See, I don't. I don't have work. I don't have body. You always eat. You see, be diligent in saving little little things. You'll be surprised that. He, as we have been saying, little drops of water makes mighty ocean. If you want God to put some money in your bank account, go and open an account. That's all. Diligent in your finances. And then we have to be, be, be careful with what we say with our mouths. Because we are storing, we are working. The, even your mouth, you have to be diligent what you say. You have to be careful what you say. Aristotle said this many years ago, and I want to quote. Aristotle said this many years ago, and I want to quote. Excellence is never 
an accident, you don't stumble to it. He says that it is always the result of high intention. High intention. You must intend to that the sky is your limit. Set set goals, high goals. So be a D and answer oh yeah, dear be near once a way dear watch and so crano and ya dear and no one ever. Sincere effort and intelligent execution. Unquote. Excellence is never an accident. It is, it is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. Execution, unquote, Aristotle. And ya quinceo, memum, a ye see a ye do my ding, near the nome gugua quem, ne a yere home, see a bit to me a drew home. Excellence is never accident. Set ye a chance, so I didn't name Muna and Abribuno. It is always the result of high intention. And ya quincea, nemum bribia, my son a bebano, as I see a ye do my ding, a yere home. Sincere effort. Set you fear and cream, a ya dear, and intelligent execution. Not your dear Jenny, as you said, no ma, a dear go quem when you drew home. Reposition your hands. What do you have for one, sir? A dinner year. So I put some comma here. Yes, say and Sadi, with his son. Next week, if God grants us the grace, I'll continue on repositioning your hands.